So I'm, I'm trying to get the timeline here. The the whole Vatican thing, did that, did that happen before or after you got made? That was before. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about that. All right. I can't talk about the Vatican and I'll tell you why. Because right now they're doing, we're in the, they're filming a, uh, a documentary series on me about the Vatican and they're writing a script to do a uh, scripted series. If I speak to you about that and give you an exclusive on it, it blows my whole contract. Okay. Now, All right, if you so want we'll to, we'll I'm going to be. I'm not trying to be funny, but if you want to pay oh, me two million dollars, like they're going to, you know, what I'm saying to get the exclusive, that's fine. Got it. But like I said, I tell you, I blow it. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Fair I, enough. Okay. So, I mean, according to your book, what I can do with you once we get the documentary out. It should be out this year. I would be free to talk to you about it. So, there is the Lufthansa. The heist, uh, which was actually depicted in the movie Goodfellas. Play that movie was more more bull than anything else. Please, I love it when okay. they make these movies and there's more garbage than anything else. Okay, well, uh, so this whole scene was depicted, you know, with Robert De Niro, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being the mastermind of the whole uh, Lufthansa uh, heist. <laughs> uh, but you were actually involved in the real Lufthansa heist. All right, listen to me. Jimmy Burke had a guy around him named Marty Krugman. Marty Krugman is the guy who played more, who Maury was supposed to be. Marty Krugman years ago had a wig company, and then he used to go like this with his hand, hard to believe on ball, and he used to pull his hand, through his hand, pull it, and he used to jump in the pool. His real name was Marty Krugman. He had a numbers business, numbers, a sports business, a Shylock business, but he spent more than he made. He used to borrow money from Jimmy Burke. All right? And Jimmy Burke was Shylock him the money to be paying him the interest. So what happened? He got into Jimmy for a lot of heavy money. So he came up with this deal about Lufthansa. He brought it to Jimmy Burke. Jimmy Burke had to bring it to Paul Ivario because he entered the Paul Ivario. Now they says, well, let's bring it to families and see what's going on. They brought it to one, two, three families. And I was listening. One genius turns around and says, oh, We'll go in there with a helicopter, put the cable down, have guys there, break into the place, connect it to the safe, pull it out, and take off with the helicopter. And I sat there. I started laughing. So the guy goes, what the fuck are you laughing about? He goes, you ain't what? So, so, they, so the old man Tom says, let him talk. I says, you're in an airport. Wait, how are you going to get away? You come with a helicopter and do that. They call the jets. They come in from Jersey. They shoot you right out of the sky. How are you going to get away with that? Another genius comes up, but we're going to come in with uh, big, heavy-duty trucks. We're going to smash through the wall, take the safe and get And how are you going to get out of there with all the police and everybody around? You're not. You're so everybody started going back and forth. So, well, what, what ideas do you got? So Jimmy Burke, we met with him. And I says, I got one person that I can go to. I said, if he can't put it together, nobody can. So he says, I'll go see Maya Lansky. I went down. To Miami. I called Myra up and said, I'm coming down for a couple of days. He says, come on. He picked me up at the airport, and I ran the whole thing to him. He says, let's relax a couple of days. I'm going to come up. He says, and then I want to look at it. He goes, show me what's going on. I said, all right. I went down, relaxed. I came, up, I came up first, and then he came up later on that day. So when he came up, we all got together, me, him, my cousin Mac, and Jimmy Burke, got in the car, went to the airport. And we're driving around, and outside, and there was the, um, went into the terminal, and then there was the main office where their safe was in. Next to it, there were two containers. They were about three feet tall, three feet wide. They had a check mark in there, black check mark in the orange circle. Maya says, there's something in those containers. I said, Maya, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, there's something in those containers. Okay. P.S., we made three trips all together before we put it together. When he put it together, he put a crew together. He put three different crews together. One went into the office where the safe was, and each one worked on each one of those containers. Because every time he came in and we went there, those containers were still there. So he said, there's something in there. It's okay. When the heist went off, one crew went in through the safe. They took the cash and some jewelry out of there. The other two crews went in and worked on, the, were outside rather, excuse me, and they worked on those two containers. One container... After we, after we uh, fenced everything, 
$5 million in jewelry. The other one, $30 million in bearer bonds, all slated to go to Germany, to Germany with the names and the manifest of everybody on that who owned it. So Maya came up and he said, you know what we done? I said, no, what? He goes, the crooks just robbed the crooks. That's what he's talking about. Somebody robbed them. They were sticking to Germany and we robbed them. The crooks robbed the crooks. And I used to bring this stuff back and forth to Florida for him to fence and bring the money and everything up. Well, now, I mean, according one to, thing, to one news thing, reports. One thing. Everybody, some people will tell you, oh, Maya wasn't here. Go check with the FBI. Maya was under surveillance in 1978, and they got surveillance pictures of him coming into New York. But you know what the funny thing about it is? You know what the real funny thing is? You got surveillance pictures of him coming into New York in 1978 in Brooklyn at the airport, all right? So you know something's going on, right? All right? You got all these all these gangsters or whatever. The high still went off with no problem. And nobody got caught if Henry Hill didn't open up his mouth. If Jimmy Burke didn't open up his mouth to Henry Hill, nobody would ever got caught. Nobody would ever known about it. 